little bit later. And we're delighted for everyone that is here tonight. And if this is your first night, welcome to the party. We've been having a great time. And we're delighted you're joining with us. Let's give all of our new arrivals a good hand. All of the young people, please pay attention. We've got something special for you tonight following service in the lobby from 11 until 2 a.m. Uh, is going to be a special youth event and uh, there will be a taco truck cash only tacos five three tacos for five dollars and a drink so that's all going to be here for all of you young people the coffee shop will be open uh, and hot chocolate will be provided for the youth so that begins at 11 so until 11 the coffee shop is open for everyone else they do have food available there and uh, make make yourself uh, a part of that before you go do whatever you're going to do. Also, CDs and DVDs are available in MP3s of the conference. Have you been blessed this week by the preaching of the Word of the Lord? So these are available. You can stop by the Koinonia Bookstore and you can you can get those. They're available after service tonight. And then all of our all of our ministers, would you please stand? All of our ministers, preachers, evangelists, assistant pastors. Amen. Give these brothers and sisters a big hand. We want to personally invite you following service tonight through either side of the hallway behind the auditorium in the Hall of Faith is the hospitality suite for ministry. And then the shuttle will be going back and forth. Please. Uh, ride the shuttle, come join us. There is a meal provided for you and your family tonight, and uh, we'll be, be delighted to see you. Uh, also, there are many of you that live in the area close by uh, or maybe within driving distance and are looking for things to do uh, with your family, or even if you are looking for something to do with maybe a church activity or something. Coming up on uh, the Easter weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday afternoon, and Sunday night, of Easter weekend, uh, this church puts on, tomorrow morning it will look like this, this, this place will be ripped apart uh, starting at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning from that wall to that wall is one big stage and we present what is called For What Purpose and a number of you have asked, we weren't going to make this announcement, but many of you have asked about it and so we've got a little promo here that we're going to uh, give you and give you the dates and so maybe this would be of interest, we can do group rates for your youth group or or any of your team or business leaders. I know we have community people that are here today. So this will be a great time. So uh, here is a presentation for what purpose?
Pentecost. I didn't grow up on tree hugger worship. I didn't grow up on coffee talks on Wednesday night. I grew up on apostolic church.
on many grounds. And thank you, Brother Kimbo, for preaching, and then uh, Brother Stephen Jones. How many were touched by the Holy Ghost missionary Stephen Jones the Honduras? And I want uh, Brother Braden Reeves, would you stand up? Amen. Outgoing missionary to Crete. Today we took an offering. Maybe some of you wanted to be participants in that. Normally we do that on Friday night. The Holy Ghost just kind of opened up and it flowed out of the service today. Keep standing, Brother Reeves. Uh, Brother Platania, are you here? Brother Sister Platania, would you stand? Beginning a work in the city of Rome, Italy. And uh, they need our support. Amen. And, uh, Brother Stephen Jones, are you here tonight? Up here on the platform, stand up. Brother Stephen Jones, Roatan, Honduras. Let's give him a big hand. These three missionaries are here, and uh, they not only need an offering, but they need monthly support. If you know anything about missions, it's those consistent givers month after month after month. And uh, sometimes a little is much when God is in it, and a lot of people are doing a lot. So, uh, I want to encourage you, you pastors, if you have not met these three families, take time tonight uh, at the Wilson home or even tonight after service. Look them up, find them, and be a part. Invest. You, you, this one of those there, you can get on the ground floor. Get on the ground floor. They're founding these works, and we bless them. Amen. I have the privilege of working on a day-to-day -day basis with one of the Apostolic Movement's great men. And I honor and love my father-in-law, Bishop Nathaniel Wilson. Brother Wilson, come talk to us today. We love you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Young. Amen. And all of you, that this is the first night that you've been able to attend, we want to give you a special welcome, and we're glad that you're here. And um, uh, we hope you can pick up all of the services. It's not quite the same, but if you can... Get um, a DVD or a CD. Um, at least you can get uh, the, the general thrust of what the Holy Ghost is doing here in this place. There have been some outstanding miracles take place in this meeting. During the time of this meeting, there has been some outstanding miracles take place, and we're very excited about that. Amen. And um, I, I want to make mention now, uh, brother. Uh, Daniel Blash was scheduled to preach tonight, and he, he begged off. And uh, where you at, Brother Blash? Uh, we and we we weren't uh, we weren't too happy about that. Uh, but uh, we, you know, you never. This is a good thing to learn because it's the way it is in life. Although I don't like it, but you never just give in. You always negotiate. Whatever it is, it looks like if you're going to lose, frantically start thinking, how can I negotiate to get something out of this? And so, uh, uh, when Brother Blash uh, mentioned that, uh, we immediately went into negotiation mode and said, well, I guess, okay, if that's what you say, but you got to preach next year. And so, we got that negotiated. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, we're excited about that. And we are equally excited tonight. Uh, to have just one of the, I mean, just one of the core people to the whole theological worldview and what we do uh, in No Limits and, um, and beyond with Brother Nathaniel Lerchick, who's going to preach in just a few minutes. And we're going to enjoy the Word of God. Can you say amen? Amen. Part of the time we may be saying, oh me, and some of the time we'll be saying, oh bless the Lord, but we need it all. And, uh, and so thank God uh, for that. And thank God for Brother Hershey. Now, I want to take just a moment and reiterate what, what Pastor just said. All of you who are ministers and your wives, um, uh, you are, Sister Wilson and I would like to invite you to the house tonight along with Brother and Sister Young. We want you to come and be with us. When Brother Young mentions a shuttle, you go through these two side doors right in the back. It, if, if you bring your car, it's problematic. Just ride the shuttle and enjoy it. It runs every 10 minutes. You're not going to get stuck out there till 4 o'clock in the morning, I hope. And uh, uh, 
Amen. No, it's fine if you do. Just sleep on the couch. But anyway, uh, uh, we're going to have a great time. And, and if you've never been out to our home, we want you to come. Don't, don't say, I wonder if that means me. Yes, that means you. And uh, we'll have a great time uh, together. Amen. Another great man of God's coming right now, Brother Jerry Rowley. Well, why don't you stand on your feet right now? Aren't you happy to be at No Limits 2018? Well, aren't you having a great time? The preaching has been phenomenal. The worship's been exceptional. And uh, you preachers especially know the expense of putting on a meeting like this. Uh, I mean, it costs several hundred dollars just to have a one-night show. So I'm sure it costs fifty, sixty thousand dollars maybe more than that, to do the things they do here. Now, they told me not to make a very strong pull. Uh, that's just the kind of people they are. They're willing to spend and be spent. As they're, that's not just a sign hanging up there. They practice that as well in church. But I think we can help them. How many of you think we can help them a little bit? Have you enjoyed it? You know, if you're, if you're planning on spending extra time here, maybe going to Tahoe, maybe some of the other places in uh, California, you go to SeaWorld or Legoland or Disneyland, some of these places, it's $50, $60, $70 a person to get in if you get a group rate. So uh, tonight, before you leave, we're going to have an exit fee. We're only going to charge $75 per person to get out. No, we're not going to do that. But we are happy you're here, and we do want to give you an opportunity to give. I've done this all over the country, and it works pretty good. But I'd like to find out how many of you will give something in the offering tonight. What a commitment out of you. Some of you are not doing anything. I'm just looking over here right now. Put your hand up. You'll give something. Dollar. Wait a minute. If you look at somebody that got their hand up, say, hey, I'll, I'll loan you a dollar. So this guy will go sit down. We do it. How many over here on this side? Give something. Something. Whatever it is. This section. Something. Look at your neighbor, left and right. They got their hand up. I said, why aren't you getting why don't you have a hand up? Here? Something. Something. I see you. You don't have a hand up, put your hand up. Yeah, you, the tall guy. Right there. Hand up. This section. Hand up. The risers. Something. Here. Now I'm getting over here to the preachers. I want both hands up. We're going to give. What about the platform? Up here, we're going to give. We're going to give. All right. If you'll all give, everything will be taken good care of. There's several thousand people connecting on the various different media streams. Holy Ghost Radio, there's somewhere between five and 6,000 people. Facebook Live, the church website. This is having a far-reaching impact all over North America and around the world right now. So you have a part and you can invest in it. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just uh, seen, I didn't see, but somebody mentioned to me that Brother Jim Johnson is here. My neighbor in Natchez, Mississippi. Brother Johnson, we've been praying for Sierra. And uh, we want you to know this, this group of people have been praying for your daughter. We're going to continue to pray for your daughter. And we ask the blessings on this offering. I want us to pray for her right now. Can we do that all across the building? God, you see the needs that are represented in this house. You know the financial needs of this local church. You know the expense of this No Limits Conference. You can use us to make sure that everything gets taken care of. Reach down to that hospital room right now and touch Sierra. She's a young lady that has given her heart, her mind, her soul, her life to your kingdom. Hope Corps. The local church bus ministry god you touch her in jesus name bless the gifts and the givers and we'll thank you for it and everybody said amen. amen make sure that person gives standing next to you
good is preached tonight. Right where you're at, I want you to lift your voice. I want you to lift your hands.
Pastor and Sister Young do such an amazing job. Aren't you thankful for them? the man of God and his precious wife and their family? We love you, Brother God. We appreciate you so much. Bishop and Sister Wilson and this family, we love them and we honor them. The, the Wilsons and the Youngs and the Salters, uh, they were very instrumental in my wife, myself, my boys in our life at a very, very dark time in our life. And I'm finding out that that's a common theme, Bishop Wilson. You've, you've run in on a, on a white horse in a lot of people's lives. Amen. And, and we thank you for your counsel. We thank you for the wisdom that you've helped us so much with. Amen. And so there's a loyalty there and there is a love there. And we thank our great God for what he's put together in this last day. You're part of a dynamic church. You're part of an apostolic church that's taking territory. Amen. Amen. This is the best time to live for God right now. I don't want to live in the days of Abraham. I don't want to live in the days of David. Amen. Abraham rejoiced to see the day of Jesus Christ. And he was glad. You're living in the greatest day this world has ever seen. Amen. And it's a good time to be apostolic. Amen. Amen. Others of you that are here that are part of the No Limits family, we love you. We appreciate you and this great rock church. Amen. Why don't you stand with me tonight? What a, what a time we've had over these last several days. Um, beginning with Brother Carpenter. Thank you, Brother Carpenter, for obeying the Holy Ghost. Amen. We love and appreciate you and have enjoyed so much getting to know you and your precious family and, and this other speakers. Wow, we've heard preaching this week. I believe in preaching. I believe we're saved by preaching. Amen. Music can thrill you, but preaching will save you. South Haven, Mississippi, back home, listening on Holy Ghost Radio. I love you. Appreciate you so much. It's a, our home, and our boys, Joseph and Benjamin, are there. I'm glad my wife, Jackie Urshan, can be with me here. I love her very much. Amen. And it's a good time to be apostolic. I'm reading tonight from Genesis chapter 48 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 48 and verse 1. While you're turning there, I enjoyed Brother Stephen Jones and Brother Ken Bo this morning. Amen. Amen. They were mightily used by the Holy Ghost. Genesis chapter 48 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And I believe that if we are going to make an impact in our world, we are going to have to walk in the full orbed dominion of the spirit world. We're not going to win these battles by flesh. No, nope. no. Nope. We're not going to win these battles by our cunning. 
We're not going to think our way into the future because there's stuff coming down the pike that is going to blow our minds. But as much as hell is going to throw at us, our God is that much greater. Amen. I need some people that believe that here tonight. How many believe in your God? In the name of Jesus. So tonight I want to try to convey an idea that God laid on my heart. I hope I can do it justice. I want to preach to you a message I'm entitling, Jacob is weak, but Israel is strong. Jacob is weak, but Israel is strong. Look at the first person standing next to you and tell him we got to walk in the spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I am so glad to be part of God's church. There is no place I would rather be than in the church of the living God. If you're in the church, you're in a good place. We're not going down, we're going up. We're not falling apart, we're coming together. We're not growing older, we're growing younger. Amen. You are in the, what the Bible calls the innumerable company of angels. The general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Amen. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Welcome to the church. I'm not talking about the church that the Pope built. I'm not talking about the church that John Wesley built. I'm not talking about the church that Martin Luther built. I'm not talking about the church that Joseph Smith built. I'm not talking about the church that Charles Taz Russell built. I'm talking about the church that Jesus built. Hey, hey, he said upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. It's a blood lost church. It's a Jesus name church. It's a holiness church. Yes! I'm talking about the church. And you gotta stop that. I'll do this all night. <laughs> Praise God. You give me a B3 in the church, man, and we'll have us a Holy Ghost. doesn't need dead church. Our gold world doesn't need quiet church. Our world doesn't need sophisticated church. It needs chain breaking, devil chasing, holy ghost. It needs a church that's on fire. It needs a church that's dripping with the anointing. It needs a church that's looking hell in the eyes and saying we're not going anywhere. But I'm pulling people out of the fire. Hating the garment spotted by the flesh. It's the church. Right. Amen. I love God's church. I know that there's mistakes. I know that there's hypocrites. I know that there's failures. But I still love his church. I know there's been problems. I know there's been difficulties. 
I know there's been rough patches, but I still love the church. It was in the church that you found salvation. It was in the church that you got baptized. It was in the church that you had your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It was in the church, in the church, in the church, in the church. It's going to be in the church that you make it to heaven. It's going to be in the church that you're going to wash your garments and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. It's going to be in the church. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's be the church. Let's be the book of Acts administration that casts down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself again. Except against the knowledge of God. Old song says it's been through the fire and the fire couldn't burn it. It's been through the flood and the flood couldn't turn it. It's the church, it's triumphant, and it's built by the hand of the Lord. Are you glad you're in the church tonight? Are you glad you're Jesus' name tonight? Come on, don't patty cake with the devil. Don't play around with compromise. Are you glad you know that he's the Father, he's the Son, and he's the Holy Ghost? And all these three are one. Hey, glory to God. church. The devil's scared of a mobilized church. The, the devil is scared of an apostolic church. He's not afraid of denomination. He's not afraid of religion. He's not afraid of stained glass windows. He's not afraid of holy water. But he is definitely afraid of the church. He knows that if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, that God will heal from heaven. It's the church. It's the church that Jesus started. Amen. You can be seated. church to get to a point to where it's not functioning in optimum fashion. Our world has seen enough hypocrites. They are begging, they are pleading for someone to be what they say they are. They are desperate for someone to be on Monday what they say they are on Sunday. 
Our world doesn't need a sick church. It needs a live church. It doesn't need a church that limps or a church that hobbles or a church that cringes or a church that is intimidated or beaten down or ashamed of it. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to This thing works the way it's designed to work. There is no force in hell that can stand against the church. But one came and said, they're sick. We've seen, if you're not careful, you can you can operate at less than full capacity as the church. We've heard preaching this week that has touched on this subject, touched on this topic. But if there's ever been a time where we need to be what, what the essential church is in Scripture, that time is right now. It's not time to backslide. It's not time to cruise the internet for six hours a day and wonder why we have mediocre services and anemic prayer lives and lust that rips apart young men and young ladies. Come on, we need clear eyed young men and young ladies that, that purpose in their heart that they're not going to defile themselves with Babylon's table. Strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. But you live in the same world that I live in and it is a reality that we have to confront, we have to guard against. It is possible for God's people to be sick. It is possible. And I don't just mean sick in a corrupt sense, but, but I, sometimes it's heart sick. There are people in this room right now that you have come to no limits and you are sick with failed expectations. There's home missionaries in this room right now. The devil has told you you are never going to have revival. That you're never going to make it. That you're always going to be the tail and you're never going to be the head. There are pastor's wives that are miserable and they are wondering if this is what living for God is all about. Then I'm at my wit's end. And they're holding up the hands of men who are struggling and they're trying to keep their children together. And that's one of the reasons why you're here at No Limits. And hell is throwing everything in its arsenal at people. And they have come sick and weary and hurting to No Limits 2018. And I came to preach to you tonight that the devil is a liar. You listen to me. Hope missionary wife, the devil is a liar. God has great things in store for his church. Listen to me, missionary. God is going to show up and he's going to show out in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to go home stronger than what you can. You're going to go home with a word from God. You're going to go home ready to tackle hell with a bucket of water because you're part of a glorious church. It's a fearful thing when God's people are sick. Amen. I've, I've seen, I've seen it. The, the, the idea that is presented here in, in the scripture is that it can be one man with two administrations. Jacob doesn't have the power, but Israel does. The idea is that, that there is a, a fallen nature that will never have dominion. But there is a heavenly nature that is well able. 
you can look in the mirror and see the same face looking back at you. Amen. And, and it depends on whether or not you've been in a prayer room as to whether you're looking at Jacob or whether you're looking at Israel. Are you going to walk in fallenness? Are you going to walk in defeat? Are you going to walk in despair? Or are you going to hear the word of the Lord and say, wait a minute. My God is great and he's greatly to be praised. You've got to let Israel grab the reins of your life. Amen. To get a grip on that, you have to understand the prophecy that was given. Uh, the Bible describes it. Rebecca is with child and she's going to have babies. She's going to have twins. And as she struggles and she is struggling, she has become pregnant. God has blessed her. He has blessed her with with conception, a barren womb that that would look so hopeless and so unable and so lost, God reached down from heaven and touched her and blessed her. And in that blessing, Bible says that the two babes that were in sight of her were at war with one another. Amen. Anybody that comes into this apostolic lifestyle will have a struggle on the inside. There's going to be a fight on the inside. There's going to be two nations at war on the inside. Amen. And, and, and the, the idea is that there is going to be flesh and there is going to be spirit. One is going to pull one way and the other is going to pull another way. One is going to pull towards the things of God and one is going to pull towards the things of the world. And though you are blessed, you are faced with the challenge of, of gaining dominion and gaining victory on the inside. And she looks around and she said, I thought this was going to be a blessing. I thought this was going to be a, a wonderful thing. I wanted so badly to be with child, but something's going on on the inside of me. Can any test, anybody testify to how it felt when you realized that you had to, you had to either walk in the spirit or walk in the flesh? Amen. You found out that going to church meant that there was going to be a war on the inside of you. Amen. There's going to be one side of you that is tugged towards the world and another side of you that is going to pull towards the things of God. If we are going to have revival, No Limits 2018, we're going to have to walk in the Spirit. We're going to have to grab a hold of ourselves and say, I know the struggle is real, but I am going to find the prayer room. I am going to find the mind of God. We've got to have young preachers that are going to say, I'm not going to get lost in Hollywood, but I'm going to get lost in His Word. I'm not going to get lost in the entertainment world, but I'm going to get lost in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so when she asked the question, what's going on on the inside? The answer came back, there are two nations at war inside of you. And one is stronger than the other. And, and God loves one of them. And he hates the other. Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. There's the idea that the firstborn is, is going to be one that does not have God's favor. And the second born is the one that God is going to choose. What is it about the first born that causes heaven to, to look on with disapproval? There's something about Esau, the first born, that is strong. 
He's powerful. He, he knows what he wants. He is a man of the field. Esau doesn't need God. Esau's strength is his liability. Esau's ability is his weakness when it comes to the things of God. I want to tell somebody, I want you to be strong, but I don't want you to ever forget where your strength comes from. I hope you get education. But don't you ever get so educated that you can't speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I hope you make a million dollars, but I hope you never get so rich that you can't run the aisles and worship and dance before God. I hope you live in a nice house, but I hope it never silences your praise and mutes your worship because your strength can never take Precedence over the presence of God. And there's something about that firstborn nature that God says, I hate it. And there's something about the secondborn that says, I want what God has in store for me no matter the cost. There will be a second form that comes along. Every apostolic in this room has to come to grips with this reality. Your first form is your natural birthday. It's your Esau. It's your physical man. It is strong. It is self-will. If you give the firstborn control, it will destroy your marriage. It will take your children towards the world. The firstborn will lose out with God. The firstborn will sell out eternity for the temporary satisfaction of a bowl of soup. The firstborn says, what good will the birthright do me if I die? What good will it do me if I not? It's a question that Esau asked within himself. And there's actually an answer to that. A lot. It'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. It'll give you the stars of heaven. It'll give you the sand by the seashore. It'll save you. It'll deliver you. It'll pull you out of hell. It'll solidify your marriage. Hey, I've got a birthright that I'll do anything to keep a hold of. I came to No Limits 2018 because I'm going to grab a hold of the birthright. I came looking for a word from God. I came expecting an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And the flesh may not want it, but the Spirit does. and the new nature, the firstborn and the secondborn, you're going to see it repeated over and over and over and over again. Amen. You're going to see it in Cain and Abel, where, where the older grows jealous at the sacrifice of the younger. I didn't come to bring the wrong sacrifice tonight. I came to bring a sacrifice according to the word of the Lord. Can we have a little apostolic church tonight? There's some canes. There's some canes that would look at what you're doing and say, have you lost your mind? That doesn't work in 2018. You gotta sit down. Surely you need some fog machines. Surely you need, you need some kind of a prop. Surely you need to tone it down a little bit. But there's an evil that rises up that says, oh no, there's a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And that didn't come to turn it down. I came to turn it up. I came to have Holy Ghost Church. I came to dance in the spirit. 
question, Mr. Simon, is not why am I down here. The question, Mr. Simon, is why aren't you down here with me? What's wrong with you that you can't shout? What's wrong with you that you can't dance? What's wrong with you that you can't get excited? You'll see that same voice when Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem and they take the palm branches and they start saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And here comes the voice of the older brother that says, don't you hear what they're saying? Don't you hear what they're doing? You need to tell them to be quiet. When that voice comes to you to tell you to be quiet, you need to look back at that voice and say, honey, I ain't even got started yet. If you think that was something, watch me now. Watch me now. Blessed is he who cometh in the name, in the name, in the... Somebody grab a palm branch. Somebody lay your garment down and give him a little praise on a Friday night.
can be Jacob or you can be Israel. You can be the old man or you can be the new man. You can do what works or you can do what doesn't work. Michael looked down on him and despised him as he danced before the Lord. What in the world are you thinking, praising God like that? Have you lost your mind? David looked back up at her and he said, I got news for you. It was before the Lord. I didn't do this for you. I didn't do this for your backside.
Jacob carries the weight. Jacob carries the weight of Reuben's failure. He carries the weight of lies that his boys have told me, have told him. He carries the weight of all the failures and the famine and the worry and the concern. I know that there's bad things that happen in the church and I know that the church can get pretty beat up, but we're not gonna do this thing as Jacob. We're gonna do this thing as Israel. I came to remind somebody of who you are. I came to remind No Limits 2018 of who you are. The Bible says that the righteous shall flourish but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The devil has plans for you. Your enemy has plans for you. Jacob labors under the expectation of Laban. He labors under the lies that have been told to him. He's weary and he's about to give up and he's about to fall apart. But somebody came to Jacob and said, Joseph's here. You're not going to die. You're going to live. Your boy is here. Your promise is here. You're not going down. You're going up. In the name of Jesus. There's a false narrative that hell has put out towards the apostolic church that says that you're not going to make it, that, that, that you're falling apart, that nobody cares about you, that you're behind the times, that, 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 that there's no, even, no reason to even try to praise God. I came to tell you that Jesus is here. in the first place. God gave you dominion. God gave you power. God gave you a promise. God gave you your city. God gave you... God put you in your church. God put you in that foreign field. God put you, God put you, God put you there. So get up. Get up. Get up off of your bed. Get up out of your discouragement. Get up out of your defeat. Come on, Israel. Come on, Israel. You gotta get up. Brother Caleb Adams, come on up here. Brother Phil Anderson, come on up here. Hallelujah. Pastor Young, come on. Come on over here, Brother Randy Williams, Brother Joel Buxton. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Men of God, friends of mine. Amen. Other young pastors, I want you to come on. I want you to step out from where you are. If the devil's lied to you, come on up next to me, guys. Come right up next to me. Amen. We're going to lay hands on these people. We're going to believe God. The, the devil has lied. The devil has said that, that we're not going to make it. That he has told us. That, that we're just a bunch of old conservative men that don't know what we're doing and that we're going to fall apart and, 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 and that, that, that we don't understand revival. Just give us a little time and, 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 and you're not going to make it. There's, there's an expectation of the wicked that they have plans for us. But the desire of the righteous is going to flourish. God's doing big things. Listen to me. God's doing big things. Brother Bass, come on. Come up here. Others of you. Amen. Some of these missionaries. Brother Allen, come on. Amen. Men of God. Evangelists, come on. Brother Haddon, come on. Come over here with us. Look at him. Look at him. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. In the, last, in the last year or two, these men have been blessed. Some of them have been handed a million dollars. 
Some of them have sold their churches and have made such a profit that it has propelled them into unprecedented revival. Brother Stephen Jones, where you at? Come on up. The devil told you that Roatan wasn't going to make it. He told you that you're not going to finish that building. I came to tell you the devil's a liar. liar. We are going to make it. We're just getting started. We've got a praise. We've got an apostolic identity. We know who our God is. We're not backing up. We're not going home. We're not compromising. But we've got revival. We've got the name of Jesus. We've got the church. That's the last night of No Limits 2018. And we're going to have a time in the Holy Ghost. Here's what we're going to do. First of all, I want you to stretch your hand up here to these great men of God. I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray for us that we hold this line. Uh, these elders, come on, Brother Carpenter. These, come on. Come on, Brother, Brother Walker. Come on. Bradley. Bradley Smith. Come on. Come up here. I want you to stretch your hands to men of God. And I want you to pray. God's unleashing unprecedented revival right now. In the name of Jesus. Stretch your hand out. Stretch your hand out. Stretch your hand out to the next generation. Come on. Come on. I know you're tired, but come on. I know the devil's coming against you, but come on. I know the devil's attacking your wife, but come on. I know that the finances are tight, but come on. Come on, Israel. That's it. That's it. That's it. The expectation of the wicked is going to perish. Get up, Israel. Get up, Israel. Get up, people of God. Get up, preacher. Get up, missionary. Come on. Get up, prayer warrior. Get up. Get up, home missionary. Somebody gets their hands in there. 